Welcome to Unit 23. This is the last unit in which we will be learning new things in our course. So you've come a long way and we're about ready to review and finish. But in this unit we're going to learn about online resumes and merging documents. In Lesson 111 we're going to start out looking at 111E about online resumes and there is so much to cover and only one chance to apply it. I'm going to approach things a little differently this time. We're going to actually do 111F in the Word Processing Manual. This lesson covers borders and shading, using themes, a lot of things that are applicable to documents other than resumes, but resumes are important, probably especially if you finish your degree and think about starting to apply for jobs. So we're going to start with the actual Word Manual Lesson 111F. This is on page 183 in your Word Manual. Now over on the left there is an alert. The first one is for the Word 2007 Manual, but if you come down here about halfway, you'll see for Word 2000 slash 2010 manual on page 187, add this note above step 26. So look at this page in your Word manual and just above 26, add this in. If you need to convert the email address in row 1 to a hyperlink, select the email address, right click and click hyperlink OK. Notice the instructions as usual say to study Lesson 111 Designing an Online Resume in your Word Manual, then complete this practice exercise as directed in the Word Manual. We will do that in a moment, but first you should look as recommended beginning on page 183 to read the information about how to customize borders and shading on a table. Notice that the first paragraph is interesting because we don't actually do this, but we are talking about online resumes, advanced formatting features, and the fact that you can create electronic hyperlinks to items noted in the text shown in brackets, such as transcript or skills checklist. So if you wish to do so for your own purposes, you will want to review Lesson 89. Now on this page in your Word Manual, I'm not suggesting that you try to read it from the screen here, but to just show you what page we're talking about, I read about applying the same border with customized colors and widths to a selected row, column, or cell. Then you're going to move on to page 184. Read about applying the same border with customized colors and widths to a deselected cell immediately after following the preceding steps and read about applying shading with a customized color. As you turn the page to 185, you're going to read about themes. We will experiment a little bit with that, applying both a theme color and a theme font. And then we're going to be ready to begin our practice exercise and follow the steps in the blue bordered box on this page. So you can click Start Work. Our first step is going to be to go to the Table Tools Layout menu. Be sure that View Grid Lines is selected because we want to turn on grid lines because we're going to remove all table borders. Use the Table Move handle, click it once, then move to the Table Tools Design tab and under Borders, click No Border. Okay? Now, when you deselect the table, you can see that our grid lines are displayed. Step 2 in the practice manual says select row 1 and apply italic. Let's use our pop-up menu so that we don't need to return to the home tab every time. You can right click to pull that up and click italic here or use your keyboard command control I. Then we're going to select Lillian J. Conti, the person this resume is about and change the font to Calibri 24 Point Bold. We're going to use our pop-up menu again. It's already set for Calibri, but we need to change it to 24 Point and Bold. Now we're going to carefully drag across to select only the text in row 1. In other words, do not select the entire row of the table. 
and we're going to set a right tab at the right margin. Now you'll remember there are several ways to do this, but we're going to use the ruler. If your ruler is not on, click your ruler button right up here. I advise that you always have this displayed. And then over on the tab selector button, we're going to click until the right tab button is displayed. That's the center, and here's the right tab button. Then we're going to click just before the right margin on the ruler and drag it over to the right margin. Now notice what happened. The phone number and the email address are now aligned at the right margin. Now we're going to select each heading and change the font to Calibri 14 point bold. First select Objective and we'll use our pop-up menu to make it 14 point bold. Now we're going to use the second suggestion here at the bottom of page 185 of double clicking the Format Painter tool to apply the identical formatting to the remaining headings. Our word manual gives us another way to release the tool instead of clicking it again we can simply press Escape. So let's pick up this Format Painter back on the home ribbon, double click, notice that there is a keyboard command, then we can click education, experience, whoops I didn't get the E, so let's be careful to do that, computer skills, and references, oops I didn't get the R, so I want to be sure to go back and do that. Okay, now we can try this new suggestion of pressing Escape to turn off the Format Painter. Now watch the icon, we'll turn it off. I just pressed Escape to do that. Now we turn the page to 186 and we begin with Item 7, select all bulleted items and change the font to Calibri 11 point. Okay, under Education we have our first group of bulleted items. I'm going to select all of them and change to 11 point font. Under Experience we have two, and in two places, and under Computer Skills we have two bulleted items. Okay, we're ready for Step 8. Italicize the two job titles. Under Experience, Medical Secretary, Part-Time, Urgent Care, clicking Italic, and Volunteer, American Red Cross, italic. Step 9. Increase the indent on the line under References to align with the text following the bullet in the bulleted lists. There are two ways to do this. Click in front of Available on Request, press Control Tab. This is one way to do it, and this is the other one that is mentioned. Go to the Paragraph group on the Home ribbon and click the Increase Indent button. You see how this moves the indention markers on the ruler. Either method is acceptable here. Now step 10. Select the last line of text in the resume. Center it. And then change the font to Calibri 9 point italic. So here we go with 9 and italic. Step 11. Select row 1 and select a solid line style with 6 point width and the designated pen color of tan, background 2, darker 25 percent and apply these using the top border button or the pen. Alright, we're going back to the table tools design ribbon and here we see line style. Here we're going to change the weight to 6 point and then this is where we select the pen color. This is the tan column, if you'll notice, tan, background 2, and we're going to move down until we see darker 25%. Here we go, right here, and then notice how the cursor has become a pen. We're going to click the top border of our table, and there we have applied that. Now we're going to deselect, we're going to deselect row 1, and we're going to change the line weight to 2 and a quarter point. leave all other border settings the same. And when the pen color tool appears, I think it's misleading and difficult to think of row 1 as being divided into columns because it is a merged row. 
However, what they are talking about is the bottom of row 1. So I'm going to click over here on the side of the B column and then over here at the bottom of the A column for row 1. After step 13 it says if the border is not applied as expected make sure you are pointing the pen directly to the top of the grid line before clicking the pen or try releasing the active border button and then try again until you achieve the desired results. So in other words don't give up but this is the result that we want. Step 14. We're going to select the last row in the table and we're going to use the border button to apply a bottom border with a two and a half point width. Because we have these settings in effect you can simply come to the borders menu and click bottom border and that is what you'll find applied there if you deselect the last row. Okay, now we're going to scroll up in step 15, click cell A2, scroll down, then pressing shift, hold it while you click the last cell in that column. Now notice we have all of these cells selected. From Table Tools Design tab, Table Styles Group, click the list arrow next to the shading button. Point to Tan, Background 2 color, and come down to Darker 25%. Right here, see the mouse tool tip? Click that color square to apply shading to that selection. Now we're going to change the font color of Lillian J. Conti. In row 1, and then we're going to change the font color of each heading to Tan, Background 2, Darker 50%. We can use this font color menu in our easy access menu here. Here is the tan column, but this time we don't want 10 or 25 percent, we want 50 percent. Okay, that is the name. Now we're going to select Objective, apply the same color. Since it's already selected, the last one is in effect, so all we have to do this time is click the button can do the same thing here. It's just as easy as using the Format Painter. Computer Skills, References. Now step 19 from the Page Layout tab and the Themes group, it's over here on the left, use the Colors button and point to the various choices observing the changes in the Live Preview. Okay, I'm not going to catch them all because you'll notice there are quite a few here. But you can just take a look at some of the options. Notice how everything doesn't change, but there are a lot of choices here. And notice how you can create new theme colors. It suggests that we apply the colors for the median theme to warm up the brown colors. So let's find median. They're alphabetical. So here we go going to click Median. Then it wants us to apply the colors for the Verve theme for a gray color palette. So back we go and we'll scroll down to the V's and try Verve for a gray. Now with the Verve color theme still applied, change the font color for the name in row 1 and all the headings to pink accent 1 darker 50%. So let's try this in the color columns, pink accent 1 darker, we're still on lighter here, darker 50%. Notice how our color choices across the top, the accents are all from that color theme that we just used. So then if we go to each heading, remember we just have to click the font color button and everything is changed because it's the last choice that we used. Okay, turn the page to 187 in your Word manual and we are ready for step 23. Apply the colors for the median theme again. And notice how the font color changed to the name in row 1 and all the headings has taken place. This is because our font theme colors have changed so that the one in the same position, accent 1, is substituted for whatever theme you're choosing. Okay, now from the Page Layout tab, Themes Group, we're going to click the list arrow next to the Fonts button and point to various custom theme fonts. 
Note the live preview, but do not apply any of them. See, if you move your mouse down, hovering over each choice, it previews what it will look like. The colors stay the same, but the fonts change. So don't actually click, but just move your mouse over some of these choices so that you can see the different effects. Now, step 25, go to the Table Tools layout and turn off View Grid Lines, and your resume should look like this as the example on page 187 in your Word manual. This is how your document would print, even if you did not officially turn off the View Grid Lines. But if you are sending a Word document to your prospective employer, be sure and turn off grid lines in order to make a better impression with your document. Now here is where if you need to convert the email address in row 1 to a hyperlink, you would select the email address, right click, and click hyperlink. However, it is already a hyperlink and my suggestion would be is if you need to remove it for any reason, you can select it, right click, and click remove hyperlink and also do any of these other options to edit it. All right, you're going to save the changes to this practice document. Notice it is practice 111 and return to GDP. Okay, now your work is not actually submitted to GDP, so you are just saving the document in case you want to open it or reopen it, but it is not available for viewing in GDP. But you can save and close at this point. Good luck on your resume in Lesson 111.